Welcome to Veteran Resource Podcast, where you will meet nonprofit organizations focused on improving the lives of veterans and their family members. Here is your host, Jeremy Paris. Welcome, everybody, to episode 90 of the Veteran Resource Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Paris. So do you know how there's some of those organizations that are really large and they're doing amazing things, but there's a lot of veterans who might not have heard about them? Well, on today's episode, I'm talking with AMVETS, American Veterans, and this organization is one of the oldest organizations out there that's serving veterans, and yet I knew very little about them until I I had them on the podcast and could dig in a little bit and find out more information. I started going to the website and finding out just everything that they have to offer, and I was pretty blown away because this is one of the organizations that I'm sure many of you have heard about, but you might not know just what they have to offer you. So I think that everybody out there is going to get something out of this episode, and I'm excited to get into the interview with Miles Migliera from AMVETS. Miles Migliera is a recent communications graduate from Missouri Southern State University. The son of a retired U.S. Army soldier, Miles grew up on several military bases along the East Coast and Midwest. During his medical evaluation for Marine Officer Candidate School, Miles discovered he was genetically induced as a type 1 diabetic, therefore ending his pursuit of military service. He is currently the social media director and head editor at AMVETS, American Veterans, a leading veteran service organization with over 250,000 active members and numerous posts across the nation, providing many services to veterans and advocating veteran-related legislation AMVETS is headquartered in Lanham, Maryland. All right, let's jump right into the interview with Miles. Miles, welcome to the Veteran Resource Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeremy. How are you? I'm doing great. It's been an awesome week for me. Yes, good stuff. So let's get started with just kind of a brief description of what is AMVETS? So AMVETS, standing for American Veterans, uh, we're a VSO, we're a veteran service organization, a nonprofit, and we are considered one of the, the big six, along with uh, Paralyzed Veterans, American Legion, uh, Veteran of Foreign Wars, a- along with those guys, considered like the big boys. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, gotcha. We've got several posts uh, nationwide all the way down to Hawaii, California, out in the Midwest, uh, everywhere nationwide. Our headquarters, which is where I'm located, is here in Lanham, Maryland. Oh, I'm I'm right over in Annapolis. Perfect. I could probably throw a rock and maybe hit your house from here. Man, we could have did this in person. I know. (laughs) Next time, definitely. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get together for a, a coffee or a beer or something. Yeah. So the cool thing about AMVETS, which differentiates us from a little bit from other uh, VSOs, is that we're the most uh, inclusive. You know, with the VFW, if you are a foreign or if you are a soldier that went overseas to fight, that kind of includes you into their group. Uh, paralyzed veterans kind of is focused more towards our, our disabled veteran group. Uh, AMVETS, uh, whether you are active duty, reserve, a guard member, uh, you as long as you are honorably discharged, you are eligible to apply and receive many of our benefits, help us fight for veteran legislation, and uh, just things on that level. Very cool. And I'm looking forward to getting a lot deeper into all of the different programs that AMVETS has but first, I wanted to get a little bit of background on you. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Miles. Yes. Um, I recently just started working here at AMVETS a few months ago. I, um, I'm a college graduate from Missouri Southern State, very small school down in Joplin, Missouri. Uh, a lot of people know it from the tornado that tore through several mm-hmm. years ago. That was actually a year before I, I went there. 
um, about 6,000 kids total, very small school, majored in uh, public relations with a minor in uh, management. So a lot of fun there. And then moved out here actually to the East Coast. When I was a freshman in college, my uh, my folks got a job here on the East Coast. My dad did. After my freshman year, they said, well, you know, you've got the hang of the college thing. So we're going <laughs> to. We're going to head out now, uh, see you in three years. And so after graduation, I moved out here. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot more to do out here than there is kind of. Right. In the it, oh, you yeah. kind of got to create your own fun. But yes, so. Yeah, and I, you're, you're right here in the middle of the Baltimore, D.C. corridor. So, I mean, there's tons to do as far as, you know, with different veteran organizations, there's many, many of them here. Uh, but yes. you also have, I mean, you've got the big city with DC, you've got big city, Baltimore, you've got a little bit smaller city, but very quaint here where I am in Annapolis and everything in between. Uh, so you, you're in a great spot. Yes, definitely. I, I currently, I stay up in college park too. So it's a, uh, get kind of a taste of a real college town, which is nice as well. Right, right. Yeah. Great area, great area. What about military background? Do you do you have a? Did you grow up with uh, military members in your family or friends that were in the military? How did you get connected with AMVETS? It was um, I, I kind of compare it to the the Lieutenant Dan, the Forrest Gump setup, where they go through his uh, his family line. You know, my grandfather was an airman. Uh, my father was in the U.S. Army. Uh, he likes for me to tell people he was an operator because he was, you know, an airborne ranger, uh-huh. jumping out of the sky and uh, crawling through mud and whatnot. So we moved around a lot. Lived in uh, North Carolina and mostly on the Midwest. You know, like I said, kind of a Midwest kid. So all kinds of experience uh, with the military. And initially, you know, what I wanted to do growing up because you're surrounded by it, and. Um, I just I saw the great work that would get put into it and definitely thought, you know, even if I if wasn't a service member, doing something related to and with service members was going to be well worth it in the end. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now I now I see uh, how you got connected there with AMVETS. That makes sense. Uh, my um, I met uh, Joe Chanelli, which is our, our executive director at Last year's Arlington uh, Veterans Day, or no, the Memorial Day wreath laying ceremony, mm. and got to talking with him a little bit. And then when they needed a new social media director and editor, uh, he gave me an interview, and I was fortunate enough to uh, get the chance to, to start doing this, and it's been great. Well, that's excellent. Let's get into AMVETS a little bit. Now, I I was digging through, and... One of the things that I saw right off the bat is that this is one of the oldest and largest veteran service organizations out there. So the whole reason why I am doing this podcast is because me, myself, I was in the Army for 10 years, and I supported the Department of Defense for you know another 16 years, and I myself don't know about all of these great veteran organizations that are out there. And I'm like, if I don't know about them, then most other veterans might not know about them either. AMVETS is a great example. This is one of the oldest and largest, and I know very little about AMVETS. Yep. So, yeah, do you know when AMVETS was started? Uh, 1944. Um, It was kind of formulated around the World War II era. And, um, yes, again, one of the largest... Uh, partially that, like we said earlier, uh, with us being very inclusive, and you you hit it the nail right, you know, the hammer right on the nail as far as um, not knowing a whole lot about it because, you know, VSOs as a whole, with the changing generation, the new generation of service members that are going to start coming in, don't use the same platforms as our older ones did. Right, you know, such as like handheld uh, articles and and uh, magazines, papers. Well, everything is going electronic now. Even our websites need constant updating. So, right, that's a big reason why. 
they don't get as much spotlight and our service members don't get to see as much of the benefits as they deserve to see because we have to catch up. Well, well, let's shed some light on all of the great stuff that AMVETS is doing and hopefully some of the 20,000 plus veterans that are getting out of the military every single month, uh, hopefully some of them are going to hear this and they're going to find out that AMVETS is something that they should be getting connected with. First off, as far as the programs go, I saw in there that 75,000 benefit claims were processed uh, in, a, in one year. Like yes. you, you guys are helping with veterans who don't understand what their, what their benefits are. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and, and, and one of the big things that we do, we've got uh, 240K veterans that, that use our services. We've got uh, our own department that's our career center that helps a lot of these guys, A, transition out of the military, and B, uh, helps them find some work afterwards that kind of translate to what they did during their service. Hmm. Helps with uh, the interview process, what to expect during interviews in the workforce, even uh, helps them prepare as far as uh, appearance-wise. Lots of uh, helps with medical claims as well. We, we work closely with the VA. Uh, all kinds of things. If you can really think about it, hiring vets, uh, pushing veteran legislation is a huge one for us. We actually have our own uh, policy advisor, and she's awesome. She's always running around Capitol Hill uh, trying to get different legislation pushed through that's going to help our servicemen and women. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and I definitely want to uh, dig into that a little bit more. Let me see here. There was, aside from all of those things, another thing that I pulled from the website that kind of wowed me was that you guys are going into the the hospitals where the veterans are and you guys are spending time with them. And there's some organizations out there that are also doing this, but you guys have a million hours a year you guys spend visiting hospitalized veterans. A million hours a year. That's incredible. It's not always about money. You know, it's, it's true what they say, you know, sometimes time heals wounds, you know, spending time and, and making sure it's genuine time, not just, I, I'm, I'm here from this hour to this hour, we clock hours for AMVETS. It's, it's these people actually that want to go out and engage with those that are uh, in VA hospitals and it helps boost their spirits, you know, it helps them want to take care of themselves, helps uh, just kind of with uh, the healing process. Yeah, which is really great. We're actually a couple of us are looking forward to going out again this Saturday and uh, not only visiting our VA hospitals, but going around seeing if we can help homeless veterans. So it's it's a constant process. But if you love it, it's not work. It's just it's it's a part of your life. Yeah. So now when you're working at uh, trying to help homeless veterans, are you working with any other veteran organizations that are focusing kind of just on that we work a lot with uh goodwill which isn't you know a veteran organization mm -hmm. but um as far as helping provide clothes a lot of people know amvets for just the stores that we have set up that are uh set up to help clothe our homeless veterans mm -hmm. uh, but yeah as far as uh, the homeless veterans set up goodwill um i would have to look and see yeah, Goodwill, they, they help with a, a lot of other veteran organizations. Yeah, and, and we're always glad to have them and, and to work with them. Going down the list of other things that you guys are doing, you guys also have scholarships. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yes. We award thousands of scholarships uh, to high school seniors. A lot of it is uh, ROTC-focused as well. Oh, yeah, okay. Those are going to kind of aim to serve their country a little later on down the road mm -hmm. um, and just to help any way we can because I'll tell you firsthand, you know, being eight months out of college, uh, college is expensive. <laughs> so yes, anything, it is. <laughs> anything we can do to help, uh, help future service men and women, help future veterans get through higher education, it, it's a great deal for AMVETS. Excellent. 
Excellent. And you mentioned that you guys have a voice there on Capitol Hill, which I think is great, especially when you have such a large membership. You said, uh, what do you have, like 240, 250,000 members? Yes. Yeah, Close, so. I think closer to the, I think I said 240, but it's a little closer to the 250. Okay. Yeah. So that is you know, that carries a lot of weight when you're going to Washington and you're asking for things. Um, what types of uh, policies are you guys trying to uh, push through? We aim for uh, medical marijuana, medical cannabis for uh, veterans working through things such as P- PTSD. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, proven statistics that show that it helps even in little ways. And if it can help a little bit, you know, we're all for it. Uh, we kind of advocate against uh, privatization of VA hospitals uh, just out of concern that, you know, the private sectors don't quite have what veterans need as far as rehabilitation, uh, PTSD, counseling. Uh, another one that we were a part of and recently just got passed is uh, reserve members and guard members being recognized as veterans. Oh, uh, great. Just, yeah, exactly. Not just uh, the active duty, because that's usually what you think of. But, you know, any way you can serve your country, you should be considered a veteran if you do it through military services. Absolutely. And I, I started out as a veteran or as a veteran. I started out as a reservist. And then after a year and a half or so, I went active. I, I loved what was going on. Uh, but I mean, that time that I was a reservist at any time I could have been called in and, you know, what we've seen in the past 10, 15 years is that a lot of these reservists and national guard members are being called up to go overseas and defend our country. So why would they not be listed as veterans? Exactly. A lot of people think when you, you know, go through reserves and the guard that it's just a label, but a lot of people don't realize that you have to kind of check in on a month-to-month basis you know a lot of people have to go to drill a lot of people have to stay close to a base uh there is a chance that if you are needed you'll be called up and you have to be ready uh physically mentally emotionally right you're going through training all the time every time you go to drill you're going through training to make sure that you're up to speed i also saw something about warrior transition workshops so people getting out of the military they they are Getting help through Ambas? Yes, they work through our uh, career center as well. Um, I'm not totally in tune with all that they're doing, but you know, it's again transitioning from military life into the workforce, which can be difficult. I mean, oh yeah, it's a different bedside manner to it at times, and if you're not familiar with it, it can kind of deter you away from you know the regular civilian uh, working world because you're not used to it. You, you want to go back to, to what you know. Right, right. Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> I also saw that you guys have, and this might be something that you are directly working with, but you have the American Veteran Magazine? Yes. We are putting back out the uh, the magazine. We'll have four issues a year spread out between each three months. So our first one came out in January. The next one we're looking at is April and so on and so forth. We'll also be putting out a monthly one, but oh, it'll nice. be online. You know, that's us trying to uh, adapt to uh, the changes that are going on in the world as far as, you know, technology industry. And a lot of our veterans are happy about it. A lot of our members, uh, a lot of, for lack of a better word, our older veterans are not. Uh, mm. Getting a lot of emails, a lot of letters, you know, saying, don't take away my, my handheld copy. And right. Go, Wait a minute, you know, we're not taking it away. We're still sending out four. We all like to have those handheld copies. It's just, you know, it, it takes a lot of money there, to. Right. There's a lot of expense that goes along with it. Yeah. And why not put it back into um, the serving you guys? Right. Instead of constantly pushing out thousands of dollars worth of when we can put it out online. Well, you know, there, there are some people like my son, he's, he's 20. He's very good with technology. He's actually going to Michigan tech 
for video oh, game oh. programming. Uh, so he is totally immersed in technology, and yet he will not read a book on a, a tablet or you know anything like that. He likes the feel of holding a book in his hand and reading that physical book. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's that compromise. You know, I I too. I don't think I've ever read a book on like a Kindle or an iPad. I've always picked one up. So yeah, it's us trying to find that that nice compromise between keeping things a little bit uh, traditional mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and making sure everyone gets a little bit of what they want uh, while also uh, continuing to adapt. Because if you don't adapt as an organization, you're going downhill. Yeah. Well, I, I like that idea of, of having both, you know, quarterly, you could still have the, the one you could put in your hand and every month you can download one if, if you uh, choose to do so. That's great. Yeah, it's looking good so far. But what I did notice is that not one episode or not one issue has talked about the Veteran Resource Podcast yet. So we're going to have to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> You know, have a whole nice spread somewhere in in one of those would be great. It's just gonna say veteran podcast on a whole two pages. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> awesome. We'll we'll talk about that, you know, over coffee sometime. Yes, definitely. <laughs> now that I know we're so close, you know. Right? Absolutely. Uh so membership wise, is there is there a cost to like me being a veteran who did not go to war, I I was served from 1990 through 2000 and I didn't deploy anywhere. Uh, so for, you know, me, this, this sounds like something that I would be very interested in joining up with. How does the membership work? So membership, uh, through HQ, our headquarters here is $30 annually. And that, you know, it'll get you the magazine, uh, able to apply for all of our benefits, not only, you know, career center and whatnot, but uh, discounts and promotions through USAA, uh, LifeLock Security, um, lifetime membership, uh, just a, a one-time payment of $250 locks you in uh, for the rest of your life. Hmm. And... Um, that's a pretty good deal when you compare it to uh, other VSOs. We're very proud of it because, again, any services that we can provide, you know, it shouldn't cost a whole lot when you've already given up so much of your life, you know, for your country uh, in order to defend it and protect our rights. So, right, you know, anything that we can do to kind of to help ease our veterans' minds and and whatnot without. Uh, making them break the bank, it's uh, it's good for us. Yeah, that's not bad at all, and that seems well worth it. I mean, you guys have a lot of uh, a, a lot of benefits that come along with membership. Uh, aside from all of the things that you guys are doing, uh, just being a member, you get other benefits. I saw like you've you've got a whole page where you're listing out you know other organizations like I don't know USAA and mm-hmm. and. AGIA, Hospital Income Plan, Emergency Assistance, Orlando Vacations. You've got companies that you work with to get discounts. Is that correct? 40 or 50 of those on that that page. Um, And I went through just on Twitter the other day trying to follow all of them. I haven't gotten done yet with it. Uh, So they're all organizations that recognize AMVETS that are proud to work with our veterans. Big companies like USAA and LifeLock and even smaller ones. There's counseling. There's a lot of uh, healthcare organizations as well. Right. And you've so, got hotels in there. You've got like uh, Red Roof Inn and Motel 6 and the Wyndham Hotels. Uh, you've got car rental places. You've got yep. cruises, like all kinds of stuff. Anywhere you turn, anywhere you look at it, we're trying to diversify it. That way you're covered on all bases, you know, not just, not just three, not just through like home security and, and, um, maybe car insurance, you know, right. You need right. To tell, you need car rental, you need healthcare, you need counseling, you know, there's a, there's a company for that and they, they'll recognize AMVETS, uh, members, which is awesome. Very cool. And I know that there are some, 
entrepreneurs who listen to this podcast who are veterans, uh, they probably have their own companies. If they wanted to provide something like this, give a discount for AMVETS members, uh, how would they get connected with, uh, with you to make that happen? They can actually contact us right through uh, communications and we can see what we can do. Um, small businesses, we're, we're really, I personally am really interested in uh, getting our, our veteran small business owners recognized. We actually just did an uh, interview with uh, Bob Rosedale, who is a Air Force veteran, did over 20 years. He works with Tudor Doctor, uh, hmm. and we're going to put him in our magazine. Oh, cool. So anyone that would like to uh, call us up, uh, pimp their business a little bit, and uh, give us some interesting topics to, to talk about, you know, we're always looking to shed a little spotlight on that. Very cool. Is is there any cost for veterans to submit their business to be part of this? Nope. 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 Just a winning attitude. That's <laughs> all I <it> ask. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm definitely gonna submit mine. We're gonna we're gonna throw something up there. Yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so before we get into the final three questions, is there anything I mean, I know that there probably is because you guys are so big. But is there anything that, that we didn't cover that you think we should have? Just um, a couple of side notes, you know, as far as, um, you know, we're, we're really focused on taking our big platforms that we have and, again, advocating uh, to make sure that veterans are seen and heard. We, we recently uh, marched in the 2017, the 58th inauguration. Mm. Um, and it's like I explained to our members through Facebook, Twitter. Um, it's not a, a pro-Trump thing. It's not a pro-Hillary thing. It's a pro-veteran thing. Right. Uh, make sure that we're seen and heard. And um, got a, a good showing. And uh, ABC actually kind of covered it. They said, well, we're going to give you an app. You use this login to get in through there. And you will be able to see AMVETS and any other... VSOs, well, other people would be able to, and it got over, I want to say 20, 22 million views. Wow. People, Anvet's logo, uh, any of the other VSOs that were there as well, I think PVA might have been there. Hmm. Uh, they might have actually dropped at the last minute, but uh, that was some great exposure. Not all, everyone liked it. Uh, you know, we, we came home to find nails and screws dumped out in our parking lot at headquarters wow uh, yeah uh twice i guess uh friday either morning or night when we came home and then uh someone decided they didn't do a good enough job and came out and did it again monday we had our box truck full of nails in the tires 10 of our employees uh myself included uh wow and, yeah that's not Just, cool. That's not. I yeah. mean, what what does that what does that help to solve? That doesn't well, solve those anything. People that that just they see Amvets marches in Trump's parade and they go, "Up, oh, they're Trumpers," and uh, well, let's let's go get them. They don't right. they don't read into the fine print. They don't read into why it gets done. You know, had it been Hillary Clinton's inauguration, Amvets would still be there. And You'd we still be there. Yep. It, at every inauguration to March, we applied at President Obama's and just unfortunately weren't selected to go. So Now, isn't that, don't you guys have to uh, turn in everything to be part of that even before knowing who the president is? Yep, and it was. So, <laughs> so you guys turned this in before Trump was even elected, saying that you guys were going to be part of this parade. You guys show up for the parade, and then people are against you because you're in Trump's parade. That's well, yeah. That what you just <laughs> mentioned is the stuff that's actually in the articles. Wow. People don't read them. They just some people are headliners. Yep. They skim. Ah, uh, well, that this will pass. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> you know, if you, a lot of people that didn't know Amvets and what we do for veterans, they now know because there uh, was NBC coverage of of nails and tires and. Scattered across the parking lot, so that's great. That's uh, there's silver lining in it, right? You can look at that as a win, absolutely. And so you guys have locations just about in every state that like physical locations. Is that correct? 
Yes. Well, I think the majority of like the state with the most locations would be uh, Ohio. Huh. So shout out to anyone that's listening in Ohio. You've probably got Nambits 10 feet away from you. <laughs> it's like a Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, I think we're going to jump into the final three questions now. You ready for it? Yes. All right. Question number one, who would you like to hear on a future episode of the Veteran Resource Podcast? Well, the interesting thing that we were just talking about small businesses, uh, I personally, I would like to see uh, Travis McVeigh, founder of uh, Heroes Vodka. Ah. Well, yeah, they, uh, small vodka distillery, uh, you know, former veteran, put together his own business. And, you know, those are the things that we like to... Uh, to see. He's been featured in Marine Times, Army Times, NBC, uh, and, and, and they're building up. They, they like to uh, include us in, because we're a partner along with them, uh, in, in their whereabouts and, and how they're, they're doing. So well, that would be great setup. I will, I will reach out to Travis then. This sounds like a, like a great person to be on the show. Yes, definitely. Who knows? You might score a free bottle of vodka too. Well, hey, can't that can't hurt at all. That's for no. sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number two. What upcoming project has you fired up right now? Our big project, uh, we call it the Commander's Project. Each AMVETS commander, which there is a new one each year, focuses on uh, generating support to a project of their choosing and ours is the desert storm memorial uh that we're looking to have built and, and finished up within the next couple of years uh mm. just a memorial for specifically well not just specifically anyone can go view it but uh those who served during desert storm for them to just go appreciate bring their family you know explain to their sons and daughters what they did or maybe what their grandfathers did and um you know, just ha have something that symbolizes, you know, just another service that these men and women provide us. Yeah, I would, I would like to see that myself. Yeah. Very cool. And we've seen the layout for it. It looks beautiful. It looks slick. Yes, it's uh, on the front page of the website, I believe, if I remember yep. correctly. It'll be in that top corner, that that cover photo. So if anybody wants to see that, they can go to amvets.org a-m-v-e-t-s amvets.org and you'll see it right there and i will also have the links to the website in the show notes make it super easy for anybody to click on and get right over to it okay final question if you woke up tomorrow and you found out that somebody made an anonymous donation of 10 million dollars to your organization what would you do with it um I could say we'd probably be the most popular VSO because it would go, you know, straight into our career center and maybe a little bit into pushing our social media even further, our magazines. I'm sure, you know, our traditional veterans be a little bit more happier. Maybe they'll get eight magazines instead of four, just ah. you know, flying them on more information. But um, no, it would instantly get pumped back into our veteran services that we provide very cool and i mean th because that's that's why we're here and that's the the goal veterans serving veterans so uh if we could see a quick 10 million pumped into that yeah that'd be something that would be ecstatic but i will keep dreaming until then well you never know i mean there might be that person out there right now who's listening to this They've got an extra $10 million laying around and they're trying to figure out where they should put it. Yeah. And, and you've just heard what Miles said that AMVETS can do with it. So for that person or for anybody else who might be wanting to donate a little bit less than $10 million, where is the best place for them to get in contact with you guys? Well, as far as communication goes, which that's exactly what it would be, communicating me through migs at amvets.com or dot org, which is M I G S, you know, at amvets.org. We've got our director, our executive director, uh, which is Jay Chanelli, which is J 
uh, C H E N E L L Y at amvets.org. And we're constantly, you know, just checking emails, whatnot, getting emails all day. Yeah, those would be probably the two best to get into contact with. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Gates, Mr. Who else might have $10 million laying around. Right, right. And uh, you're, you're also able to donate right there on the website too, correct? Yes, there's a donate button right at the uh, type r- top right corner, I believe. Um, awesome. Yeah. And like I said, I will make sure that I put the links in the show notes, make it super easy for the people to get over and get plugged into the organization, become members. Um, You can find out where your locations are. You can donate everything you need to do. You can get by following those links. So I'll make sure that I, I take care of it all in the show notes for you. Well, Miles, it has been awesome having you on and learning so much about AMVETS. And I really hope that some people out there hear this and they help to get plugged in with you guys and keep the the continued growth going with your organization. Yeah, it's been a great honor, a uh, great pleasure. Uh, we've been listening a lot lately to the, the Veteran Resource Podcast and uh, look forward to keep listening and uh, definitely displaying it all over the magazine, see what we can get going. So, awesome, awesome. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, we will definitely connect. Yes, we will. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to episode 90. I learned a lot about AMBETS and I hope that you did too. Make sure you go and get connected with them. Go over to the show notes page, which you can get to by going to veteranresourcepodcast.com slash zero nine zero and you can find out more about miles and more about amvets and you can follow the links get over to their website find out if this is an organization that speaks to you and you want to become a member of i mean their rates for membership are pretty low 30 bucks a year can't beat that huh also don't keep us a secret spread the word tell people get on social media and share the posts that i put out there share the posts of the episodes so that more veterans and supporters of veterans can get plugged into this podcast and find out about more organizations and learn from the thought leaders that i have on thursday and speaking of that i've got a great episode for you tomorrow for the thought leader thursday So make sure that you tune in tomorrow for episode 91. We'll see you then.